Hello, my caffeinated friends. It's Dawn Robles here. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and it's been a while, but I'm back, and I'm here to show you this adorable little decorated pizza box with our uh, mason jar domes. I made a, a little uh, cookie shaker right here, and of course, on the inside, you got to have a treat, right? So I found these wonderful little Mrs. Filled cookies. Put that in there and I'm going to send that to my mama for her birthday this week. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using actually two stamp sets today. I'm using the Nothing's Better Than and this set is fabulous because for me there's nothing better. You have coffee and you have cocktails and you have cookies and you have chocolate. So and you got all these incredible little um, sayings that can go with it so there's so many things that you can do with this set I am absolutely in love with it uh, thank you to Connie Stewart because this was her million dollar set and she did a great job designing that now I'm also going to use the jar of flowers stamp set I'm going to use the mason jar only and the actual punch that came with it so with both of these sets they do qualify for a bundle so if you buy the nothing's better than and the dies you qualify for 10 percent off the purchase price you get the bundle price and the same thing with the jar of flowers so enough chit chat let's go ahead and get started making this super fun cute little cookie jar now i went ahead and prepped everything up so i didn't take a ton of everyone's time today so what you're going to need, you definitely need one of the pizza boxes. And you can find these in the annual catalog. And then I used a piece of real red that is cut at 3 and 3 eighths by 3 and 3 eighths. A piece of our basic black cut at 3 and a quarter by 3 and a quarter. This is, uh, I think it's called tastefully textured. I'll double check and put it in the comments below. Um, I absolutely love this set here, or this DSP. It's There's so many different um, styles, and ah, it's just wonderful. I, I can't say enough about it. Anyway, you're going to need one piece that's three and one-eighths by three and one-eighths, and then another filler piece that I cut at a half by three and one-eighth. And then another coordinating piece. This is actually going to make our uh, kitchen counter. And that's cut at three quarters by three and one eighth. So that's how I came up with all of that. You will need some scraps of white to set, uh, stamp your sediments and your mason jar. And of course your cookies and your, the cookies, your sediment and your teacup. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the easiest thing to do is go ahead and get your pizza box pre-assembled. So I just always pop out those little tabs. And everything is scored right here for you. So all you got to do is bend in your score lines. Can't get much easier than that, right? But don't don't pull it on and actually um, score or fold on all the score lines because I started putting my box together and I forgot to fold one of those in so yep a little bit of a dingbat <laughs> okay so here we go very easy to assemble you're just gonna take these and you're gonna fold these in maybe see I forgot to fold one okay let's try it again try it again okay so we're gonna fold those in and then we're just gonna stick those right into that little groove Fold the top piece over and put those in the little grooves that were provided that will keep your box in place. And then you can just go ahead and fold these tabs in. And then these go to the inside like so. Okay? So that looked like a big fumbled mess, I'm sure, but that's what we got. Okay, so now that we've got our box pre-assembled, we can go ahead and start getting our base built up. The first thing you're going to do is just attach your black and your white pieces together. Now I'm using the Stamp and Seal Plus, and I absolutely love it. It's kind of got some mixed reviews, but if you just take a super light hand, 
this is a brand new one so just you don't need to apply a lot of pressure a lot of people are having troubles with it and they're actually applying a whole lot of pressure and you barely need to touch it for it to go and release now most of us are used to the fast fuse where you got to do a check mark and with this stamp and seal plus that goes away so that was a learning curve we're just going to have a small border all the way across i just allowed for an eighth inch border okay and then we're going to go ahead and build up our kitchen wall and counter now again very simple i cut the piece decide what you want to be the top of your box and the bottom and then we're just going to attach our three quarter by three and an eighth piece to the very bottom of that again i'm just using a little bit of stampin seal plus and lining it up at the very bottom there real thick like so so now you've got a kitchen counter and you got the the backsplash behind it and then i added this extra little piece um, to hide my seam there and it blends in beautifully so let's go ahead and attach that And you wouldn't have to do this bottom piece. I just wanted it to look seriously like it was sitting on the counter. And just adhere that like so. So that's very simple, right? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in our mason jar punch and we're just gonna punch that out. Now I placed mine in the center. I just kind of tried to line it up there gave it a good punch you'll have to apply a little more pressure because you've got uh, you're going through a couple of different labels layers oh my goodness okay so then you're gonna take this lay it down where you want it again I left an eighth inch border all the way around and then I'm gonna take my mason jar that I already pre-stamped and I'm gonna fit it in there so I know exactly where to glue so when you do this, you wanna make sure everything is right where you want it to be. I'm just take a little more glue. Don't move that and then just kind of fill that right in. Okay, and then you can lift this piece up and you've got that glued down and now we're going to add some background cookies here and a lid. Can you see what I'm doing? I just pre-stamped a couple of lids and you really don't have to do this part. I just thought it looked really cute so I went ahead and put the lid on the jar here and then we're also going to take our little shaker domes here and I'm actually going to add a lid right in here as well so I'll show you how I did that in just a second so I'm just going to kind of lay out my cookies here and see I now I originally had laid four down on the inside And so I just kind of had to cut a little bit and place them where I wanted them. And if anybody knows me, you guys all know I am a cookie lover. So I was so happy when I seen this set. And of course, I've been teased like crazy. 
but it's really been a fun thing to to work with so I just kind of put three or four of them in there I cut some down to size to fit in there um, I won't bore you with that today and then I had a, I had another couple of little pieces I put three extra cookies in there just so they could be shakers so I'll do that like so and then these mason jars actually have stickers on the front and the back so you can adhere it here like so or you can adhere it to your paper and line it up that way whatever works best for you but before I do that I'm just gonna put and I apologize this is not Tombow I don't know what I did with it it's just some glue that dries clear and I just barely put any on the corners right there just like a tiny dot because it will dry clear and then I just kind of fit my lid right inside the cookie jar there like so okay so I'm gonna go ahead and take my pick tool and remove the backing here and slide my cutout on top and then I'm going to give it a good press all the way around to make sure it adheres really well and I can tell you when you stick this down you want to make sure that you adhere this very well because otherwise you're going to be like me and my cookie got stuck up there so don't do that make sure it's glued down nice and tight then I just went around again with some more glue you can use um, liquid glue is a really good application for this I'm just going to use what I got here Okay, and then I'm going to peel the backing off on this as well. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach this to my mason jar. And it should just line up perfectly right where you want it. And mine is. And then you want to make sure you take your finger or your bone folder. Do I have one here? Yes, I do. And then make sure you adhere that down real good. Just go around it. Especially if you're putting something like sequins or something in here. Um, that way they don't escape and they don't get stuck. And that's how simple that is. And then I went ahead and used some of the black and white um, baker's twine that you can find in the um, Payful playful pets sweet and I just tied a cute little bow to go with it now I am you, you can use any colors you like I am using uh, black and red simply because they are my mom's favorite colors and since I designed the box for her gotta give her what she likes it's her birthday And I have to say, I'm like the big shaker dome type things anyway. When we came out with that snow globe last year, I just went nuts with that. Made all kinds of fabulous things, which I was not sharing at the time. Get a little unnerved, but I am here and I'm doing this. So then I just cut some of that off and I went ahead and I took a glue dot. And the easiest way to attach that is just kind of roll that glue dot up into a nice little ball. And then I put it on the back of my bow. And then I put it right where I thought it would look good. And I attached it down. It's coming together nicely, huh? Okay, the next tip for you. Let me put this on here before it dries out. The next tip I have for you is I did a double design for the cookies. If you can see, there's a little bit of black and red. The best thing to do is to, when you cut these out, use our adhesive uh, glue sheets to cut it out. 
That way when you pull it off, you're not trying to, to glue everything together with that fine tip glue. So if you just use, I did I do it on both? I did, okay. See how easy that is? It just peels right off. And then you can just kind of line that up where you want it. And I guess I should have brought my glue mat down. My silicone mat, which is wonderful. That way you don't destroy your workstation. And just kind of line that up the way you like it right there. So can you all see that? Okay, and then I just, for me, I attached it right up here to the corner. And the great thing about this is you can kind of uh, sculpt it to where you want it to be. That comes in handy. So let me go ahead and peel the backing off of here. I kind of want it like so. And then I had the little dot for above the eye, but it looks like I lost it. So we're gonna, we're just gonna bypass that area right there. And then I had cut a coffee cup as well, and I used my blends to color it in. And then I just popped that up on some uh, dimensionals, if I got any. Get the right scissors here. And just pop that baby right up there. Place it about where you want it. looks good about right there and then I put cookies and then I actually stamped uh, it's a cookies kind of day which is one of the sentiments in there and I went ahead and stamped it because I was not real sure that I would get it straight for you and then I can just hand trim that And it may not be perfect, but that's okay because, again, it's a homemade thing from your heart. And that's one thing I always try to let my customers know is not everything is perfect. We all make mistakes. I make a lot of them. And sometimes the mistakes are actually more beautiful than what you originally intended to do. So that's the great thing about crafting. And then again, I'll just hand cut this. Not the best at cutting straight lines. And then I want to make sure it fits down there. And it does, and it's way crooked. That's a little bit better. And then I'm going to take two of our mini dimensionals. Okay, take two of the mini dimensionals and just pop that right towards the bottom, like so. And there I've created that. I go ahead and take this. go ahead and take this and pop it right on the top of my pizza box and you have a super cute treat box that didn't really take you very long at all to make it takes longer to cut the pieces than it actually does to assemble it so and there you go your cookies kind of shake around in there um, I'll steal the cookie out of this one And I thought about making a bigger version of this and like making a s'mores package. That would be cool too. Okay. Well, there you guys go. That's how you make the fabulous, cute little pizza box shaker. I hope you enjoyed this. If you need a, if you don't have a demonstrator and you need one, please contact me and I'd get one in the post to you. And I will have all the supplies listed below.
Thanks for watching everyone. Bye bye for now.